Hello. In this video, we will talk about the propagation of action potential. We will talk about propagation in unmyelinated nerve fibers and then in myelinated fibers. Let's get started. This is an unmyelinated nerve fiber. These are voltage gated sodium channels on its membrane. Under the resting condition, the inside of the cell is electronegative and the outer side is electropositive. In the video on the generation of the action potential, we have seen that any stimulus that brings the voltage to the threshold causes opening of the voltage gated sodium channels. So sodium ions diffuse down their electrochemical gradient into the cell. This causes depolarization of a small region of the membrane. Here this portion inside the cell is electropositive but the adjacent portion is electronegative. So positive ions diffuse into these surrounding areas. This takes the voltage over that to the threshold. So the sodium channels in these regions also open and more sodium enters into the cell. Thus the adjacent membrane is also depolarized. Then the sodium again diffuses into the surrounding and the process is repeated. This way, a wave of action potential travels away from the point of stimulus. See, the area from where the action potential has just passed is refractory. So the action potential does not travel back. It only goes away from the stimulus. So if a nerve is stimulated from the center, the action potential passes in both directions. But if it's stimulated from one end, the action potential travels to the other end. So this is how action potential propagates in an unmyelinated nerve fiber. It helps us understand the basic concept. But in our body, the system is more advanced than this. We have myelin sheath around the axons. It is made up of swan cells or oligodendrocytes. It works as an electric insulator that decreases ion flow through the membrane. The sheath is interrupted at regular intervals. In between two successive swan cells, a small area remains uninsulated. It's called node of Ranvier. Here ions can flow with ease. In fact, density of voltage gated sodium channels is very high in this area. The impulse travels through such myelinated fibers differently. Let's say the neuron has been stimulated at the dendrites and now the action potential has reached the axon. Arrival of action potential in this region causes opening of sodium channels. This leads to an influx of sodium and the membrane is depolarized. But now the adjacent membrane is insulated by myelin sheath. So the membrane does not show electrical activity in this region. Rather, the current travels only inside the axon. In this, the sodium ions that enter the cell push other sodium ions that are already in the cell. Then they push the next ions. Thus, a wave of positivity reaches the next node of Ranvier. Here we again have sodium channels that open in response to this voltage change. So sodium enters, membrane is depolarized and action potential is generated. The impulse is then conducted to the next node of Ranvier in the same manner. Thus, the action potential jumps from one node to the next one. This is called saltatory conduction. Okay, that's cool. But why bother all this when we can have a simple method that we saw earlier for unmyelinated fiber? Well, there are two advantages with saltatory conduction. It's fast and it's energy efficient. In unmyelinated fiber, the action potential passes continuously over the membrane. This is a slow process. Whereas in solitary conduction, the action potential does not travel continuously. It jumps from node to node. So the conduction is fast. Second, the energy efficiency. See, to restore the ionic balance, the sodium that has entered the cell must be extruded back. This is done by sodium potassium ATPS pump. Now, in continuous transmission, a large number of sodium ions enters the cell from all over the membrane. So the pumps require more energy to extrude this large amount. Whereas in solitary conduction, 
sodium enters only at the nodes and the amount entering is small. So less energy is required to restore the balance. The solitary conduction is more energy efficient. So this was all about propagation of action potential. Let's have a quick summary. Action potential in any region brings the voltage to the threshold in the nearby region. So voltage gated sodium channels open and action potential is generated in that area also. In this way, the action potential spreads in all directions away from the point of stimulus. Its amplitude remains the same as it spreads. In myelinated fiber, the axon is insulated by Swann cells or oligodendrocytes. They have uncovered areas at regular interval called nodes of Renvier. In such fibers, the action potential jumps from node to node. It's called solitary conduction and it's fast and energy efficient. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. At Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.